Uh, question number 12, and uh, this is for you, Tim. How will you contribute in a meaningful way and motivate your colleagues on both sides of the aisle to cut the deficit? Well, a lot of the true conservatives, you're not going to have a problem with them. Um, but uh, you will have to convince people who are addicted to government spending that they need to stop. And here's what I tell them. If you love government programs and you love government spending, you have just as much interest in cutting as anybody else because the devastation and the catastrophic impact of going completely bankrupt with no one willing to loan us any more money, the impact of that will be devastating to everyone alike. It will be bad for the country, bad for the people on the left, bad for the people on the right, bad for everybody. It's like a credit card, I tell folks. If you've got a credit card, there are two ways to stop spending. You can stop spending on your own, and you can come up with a plan, or you can keep spending until you're declined. We're at a turning point here. We're not declined yet, but we're getting close. And the country that might be doing the declining would be China, one of our creditors. That's not political hyperbole, that's reality. You can see the articles, the articles talking about downgrading our, our credit rating, the articles where people are talking about not loaning us any more money. Well, that day's coming. It's embarrassing to swipe that card at a checkout and get that decline, isn't it? Well, this, we're going to have more of an embarrassment if we keep spending the way we are. So I will take that message to everybody. You want real experience on motivating other people. Trust me, every single day that I wake up, with all the employees that I have and my business experience that I have, every single day I wake up to the realities of what government is doing to small business and to individuals. And I'll tell you what, there's not a better motivation on the face of the earth than not taking a paycheck to make sure your employees get paid. There's not a better motivation every single day to wake up going, how am I going to make it today? And this is something that Congress does not get. We need truth in spending legislation. We need actual truth in spending. We need to see exactly where our dollars are going and no more of this pork and earmarks and bills that have nothing to do with that bill's title. It is time for real transparency. All right, Scott. Number 11. Where do you and Mr. Griffin disagree on how this makes you uh, how do you and, and Mr. Griffin disagree, and how does this make you a better candidate? You know, I like Tim. Uh, we, we have an honest disagreement in this election about um, how this election is being done. I don't believe that the Washington Party establishment should be handpicking candidates in a primary in the state. I just don't. Um, you know, election, they're, they're down here trying to influence uh, the primary because of his D.C. connections and because of him being in D.C. for a long time. This is not a personal thing with him. This is just reality. I've been here. He's been up there. You know, it is, I believe that the people here in the 2nd Congressional District need to be choosing who our representatives are. We don't need the, the, minority, the minority whip from Virginia coming down here getting on the radio and saying, I know what the people in the 2nd District of Arkansas need. We know what we need. And the experience that I've had from being here for 20, you know, creating jobs, being in business here for 25 years, gives me a unique experience to take to Washington. And living here as long as I have, I understand the district. And it is time, again, for a radical departure from what we've had up there. It's not working. It is not working. And it is time to break that mold. And we've got to move forward and do something different in Washington. I agree that the 2nd Congressional District folks here should be deciding. In fact, there were two straw polls last week where the people of the 2nd Congressional District spoke, and I won them both overwhelmingly. So I agree with the people of the 2nd Congressional District. The other thing I would say is uh, no one handpicked uh, me. I think that uh, the folks who want to win this year, they look around and they see what candidates have the ability to win. And they understand that you must be organized and you must be well funded. I have hundreds and hundreds of people in this district who have entrusted me with their money because they believe in this cause. And I appreciate it. A lot of my supporters are here today, and I appreciate it. And I think that if 
you want a radical departure from the past, that means we finally want a well-funded campaign to beat the Democrats.